Oh, welcome back to Ricketts Reef. We're going to go take a quick look in the sump room. Alright, here we are in the sump room. Now, I've made some pretty exciting changes and I'm, I'm all hyped up about them. Um, yeah, no, it's not the frag tanks yet. Which is kind of okay, because I, I don't really need to have such massive frag tanks right now. I don't have that many frags to get going. So, yeah, this is the frag tanks are going to probably be another month. I know there's a lot of people excited for that. I will try to work on that as soon as possible, but you know, like my other videos, it's a it's a money thing. Kind of deciding between upgrading my computer, saving for the new PSP, or getting my frag tanks up and running. Um, the frag tanks aren't a necessity right now, so I'm kind of leaning towards upgrading my computer first, and then frag tanks, and then PSP. Anyway, to the exciting changes. First thing you're going to notice is. I threw a laptop in here. Yeah, I had an old junky laptop that, if you can see, is held together by a bunch of tape. It's just really old Presario 700. I don't even remember what's under the hood. Nothing good. But it's good enough to run my Apex controller system and my little Excel spreadsheet for when I do things to the tank which I've kind of been laxing on um, but since this is in here I'm probably gonna pick it up again so yeah I have my display module on my light fixture the computer is also in the other room and that's separated by a wall so this is great this works fantastic okay on to the changes first things first is I took the rock and a bunch of stuff out of the uh, refugium so I got a lot of room for the Cheeto to grow and I got a lot of cheeto. I got to do some clipping. Other thing is, I moved the bio pellet reactor out of the main sump area, the skimmer sump, and stuck it externally. I've got that emptying into a bucket, which then empties into the detritus strap. Uh, in the bucket is a bunch of rock that I had sitting in the refugium just to make some room for more macroalgae to grow. It was just not enough room for it. Eventually I'm going to get rid of this bucket and I'll explain that in a second. <clears throat> so this will just be sitting externally right there. No big deal. It'll look a lot prettier. Next thing is I have a skimmer bucket. <clears throat> the skimmer bucket is connected to the cup, obviously. So the, the skim egg comes down here into the bucket. Now I've got a float switch. Let's see if you can see that kind of hard to see. So I got a float switch about, well, I don't know, about five inches off the bottom of the bucket. So what happens is if anything overflows, if the skimmer overflows or I get, you know, enough skim aid, I was too lazy to clean the cup out, I'll get an alarm. It's connected to my Apex system. So the Apex will email me, send an alarm out in the house saying, hey, your skimmer bucket's full, something's going on, come attend to it. It's uh, a <laughs> the lazy man's skimmer cup. Eventually, I want to get one of those uh, squeegee things that go inside your skimmer cup. Uh, I know the water level in my skimmer is a little low right now. I'm just kind of playing with it. I'm going to get a squeegee, hopefully one day. They're kind of pricey, so I'll have to save for that. And then I'll rarely, rarely ever have to touch my skimmer, which will be nice. What I'm going for is full automation. Let's see, what else did I do? I reinforced this thing. Um, it was kind of flimsy before, I just used it to hold some containers for my calcium and alkalinity. But I've decided that I will eventually put a remote deep sand bed here. I'll have a little pump in this frag tank. It'll come over into the remote deep sand bed, which will have different sections, just so I can take out one section at a time, replace it, it just it's good for to change a remote deep sand bit a little bit at a time about once a year that will come down go into one of those tall bins that I had full of rock and then back into the sump there so anyway that's that's a future plan but what happened to my alkalinity and calcium dun, dun, dun. one of my pieces from BRS I got a couple dosers that's alkalinity on the left calcium on the right and they are fed by the jugs that are sitting over here 
So that's pretty awesome. I have found that I've, now that I've stabilized my alkalinity and calcium for the last couple of weeks, I am getting insane growth. Like, <laughs> all I can say to people is try and keep your alkalinity at about 11, 12, probably 12 is better, uh, and your calcium about 460. If you can keep your, your levels there, you're going to get some really nice SPS growth. I, I've realized I've really stifled my growth over the last year because I've been having it, my alkalinity around 8 and 9. Um, even seven for quite a while there because I was just too lazy to dose. Now that doesn't happen because I've got dosing pumps. Which I'm pretty, pretty, really happy about. The other thing I've done is with my BRS stuff, I've got a little, I made a little tee off here so when I'm ready to fill anything with RO water, I can just turn one off and turn this one on put a hose into it like when I fill my frag tanks and get them ready to go that's what I'll do uh, the other one now comes around here up into this 44 gallon brute container yes the 10 gallon Rubbermaid container I had it's just I had to fill it once a week in the winter because I get a lot of uh, a lot of evaporation in the winter with the house heat going on and you know, in the cold weather outside, it sticks to the windows sometimes, so I went with a better bucket, 44 gallons. You know, I don't have to worry if I go on extended vacation that I'm going to run out of water. This thing will last about a month, at, at the very least, a month and a half maybe. So I'm pretty pleased about that. The other thing I did with my pieces from BRS is this thing. And you're thinking, what the heck's going on there, Ricketts? You got a 44 gallon RO tub. What's that? Oh, that right there. Sorry, the low light on this camera's not that great. It is new salt water. Yes, I have devised a automatic water change system. So every day I've got a pump in there. What happens is, let me come show you how this works. Every day I've got it set up that a pump in there will pump about a gallon of water into here. Now just for redundancy's sake, I've also got a float switch in here. That's connected to an alarm that we email me and so on and so forth. So when that gets full or near full, what I'll do is I'll just pump it out, throw a little maxi jet in the bottom and pump it into the sink, get rid of it. And then after it's done that, this bucket here, a little pump in there, will pump one gallon of new salt water back in. And because I'm doing just small daily water changes, I don't need to heat the water. Uh, it, it'll make the system more stable in the long run in terms of trace elements, calcium, alkalinity. Uh, I don't shock the system with one giant water change anymore. And I also don't have to spend you know, half a day of each week doing a water change. All I have to do once in a while is get a little gravel vacuum that's connected to a canister filter. The vacuum will vacuum the gravel and then pump the clean water, pump the water through a filter and the clean water goes right back into the tank. I've heard that hot magnums are pretty good filter, canister filter for doing that. So, all this is governed by these four float switches. Bum, bum, bum which is connected to my switch box, which is connected to my Apex system. So the four switches are this. My one over there is sump high, so if anything goes wrong, uh, my sump gets too high, I get an email, certain pumps go off, so on and so forth. My next one is what I call best. That's the best level in the sump. And that's where I'm at most of the time, that's where my auto top off is governed by, so on and so forth. My next flow switch is one gallon down. I've measured it out. It's about a centimeter down from the best is a gallon. Gallon point five ish. <clears throat> anyway, so what happens is certain time of the day that other pump will pump out enough water that that float switch will activate. Once that float switch activates, that pump over there will turn off and the pump in here will turn on till it goes back up to the best level. Once it gets to the best level, that pump will turn off. Simple as that. Probably take a few minutes each day. And that down there 
is just redundancy that's a sump low level uh, what will happen is if something goes wrong maybe pumps out too much something goes haywire there's a sump low level that will turn certain pumps off so on and so forth Oops. so that's that eventually I'm hoping to get a I think I'm gonna go with Coral View because I really like the support that I get from them they did a great job with my skimmer support so I'm probably gonna get a water blaster and have that feed my display and my frag tanks so anyway that's what I've done with the BRS pieces I've kind of tidied up the wires a bit I still have to migrate some stuff onto the Apex system and then make some programming code for it which I'm pretty excited about doing you know, I love doing the programming for the Apex system it's just amazing it automates so much worth every penny so automatic water change skimmer bucket you know <laughs> that 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 really starts to complete the system the big old RO bucket there pretty pleased so when it comes time to make new salt water I just siphon uh, the amount that I need from the top to the bottom throw in some salt turn on my mixing pumps and then away I go I'll probably also have a uh, another mixing pump coming in the mail right now I'm just using two tiny Rio 200s or no Rio 800 they're pretty small so I'll probably get a Rio plus or something like that just a cheap thing to mix the salt water I don't know an hour or two each day I'll probably do a timer to put an air stone into the RO bin as well I've heard that's a good idea just to keep it fresh so yeah that's my system <laughs> there's a lot of wires but yeah that's what it takes to you know create a brain a brain for your reef to do all the thinking to make it as automated as possible because I tell you the more you can automate it the more you want to have a reef you know the less work it becomes and all these little tools that people create are for that so yeah any questions comments ask away uh, one thing I need to say on my video here is a lot of people ask me questions that are either answered in my annotations in the videos or are answered in my videos if they just actually pay a little more attention uh, there's a lot of redundant questions that I get so if you have a question about something maybe not watch it on your your cell phone because I don't think many of the cell phones get the annotations from YouTube check it out on on the actual website on a computer and see if your questions answered through the annotations and the descriptions alright take care later